Well, hello and aloha from Melbourne. How you doing? I'm Christy, one half of this podcasting dynamic duo, but enough about me because I can go on a bit. Please let me introduce to the pod the golden-haired boy from sunny Adelaide, the one with the smoothest voice on that side of Neil, the one, the only, my gorgeous cousin Ben with no middle, na- <laughs> no middle name, Kempster. <laughs> I know, I was deprived. <laughs> Thank you so much. Look, <laughs> golden-haired, not so sure about that. And sunny Adelaide, I'm not so sure about that either. We had got rain and I think it might even hail later, but, hey, I'll take the smoothest voice on this yeah, side of Neil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you have had a haircut though and you are looking to pop. Yeah. Quite fresh, yeah. Well, it was yeah. two haircuts, if I may say, because I had one. Um, you know how you go to these barbers now and you can't book? So you've got to go to a barber and they'll say, you know, okay. it's going to be 20 minutes. So I went to a barber. It was an hour wait. I thought, I'm not what? doing that. No. So I went, no. So I walked away. I went to a hairdresser, which I won't name, um, and I got home and I'm like, oh, I'm not so sure about it. And Sarah's it just looking just at cuts? my hair going, I Is hate it. It. Just it wasn't just cuts. No, it wasn't just cuts. But... <laughs> We didn't. We decided we didn't like the hair. So then I went to another barber place Ooh. where I waited about ten minutes, and they did it again. So this is two haircuts. Oh no! So you I paid know. all that money for two haircuts, and did it, yes. did it go shorter and shorter? Well, it kept getting shorter, and this guy kept saying, "Do you like it?" I said, "Well, I don't know." <laughs> like I felt like saying, "You're the barber. You should know if it's right." <laughs> You know, so it kept getting shorter and shorter. So then it got tighter and tighter and tighter. But <laughs> I'm kind of happy with it. It's like tight hair. Oh yeah, no, I look a it's little. Not too bad. I'm you, going very grey. You're you know. you've got one of those heads that looks really good shaved as well. Like you look, yeah, okay. You look super mean with a shaved head. Okay. Well, Sarah kept looking at my first haircut and saying, "Just <laughs> shave it," and I'm like, "That means she hates it." <laughs> she just kept staring at my head. Just shave it. Like, stop looking at my head. I actually said to her, can you please stop looking at it? It's stressing me out. Oh, and she no. Said, just, just shave it off. She goes, it's just a bad haircut. And it was. It was a bad haircut. So, Well, you know lovely. they say yeah. it's a week. Sorry, interrupting. It's a week between. <laughs> <laughs> it's a week between a good and a bad haircut. Cut, right? I know. I know. I know. If, uh, if Howie right. said that to me when I came home from the hairdressers, just shave it. <laughs> <laughs> mortified. I know it'd be horrible, but hey. Oh god, I've we had totally to build digress. Yeah, we no. do digress. We do yeah, you know, now. Cool. All right. Well, how you going, Ben? I'm okay. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I just need to chill out. Generally, I think you know, I'm yeah. a bit of a stress head. That's okay. Yeah, well, you're stressing so much. Your hair's falling out. I know. Absolutely, <laughs> it is. I am losing my hair. That's okay. <laughs> All right, let's crack on, Ben. Yes. Hey, I've got to say, last episode was absolutely one of my faves and we really hope you enjoyed it too. It made me laugh so much, but it did get me thinking, Ben, and I reckon we had a major outpouring of whinging. Oh, my God, did we ever. I listened back to it and was like, oh, my God, will you two just shut up? Look at all the things that are annoying you. So, all right, so here's the plan, guys. Right. There's going to be no whinging, there'll be no mm-hmm. whining. Mm-hmm. We've got it out of our system. Yep. I'm not even going to complain about haircuts. <laughs> All right, I've already it. done it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. And um, also, by the way, everyone, mum's ear is okay. She did have oh, it drained. Yeah. Both oh. ears done. Yeah. She had really? both ears drained. You know, they get the, the thingamajig in and suck it mm-hmm. out. So now she's uh, she's she's back to normal. So that's all I've got to say on that. Okay, well, that's yeah. really good to hear. I'm yeah. so happy about that. There's a fair bit of stuff going on um, around little old South Australia at the moment. Of course, you would know if you're into the AFL, and not all yeah. of our listeners are, and that's absolutely no. fine. But we had the gather round here at AFL, which is where one round was played completely in South Australia, first time it's ever been done, and it was unbelievable. I think mm. even if you weren't into football, just the atmosphere that it created was incredible. Um my brother went to your cousin. Um, you may, you may or may not know him. He went to the Crows game at oh, um, Footy Park, and yeah. it was chockers. And watching it on the TV was really good. So, I mean, I do like watching footy, and um, so it I enjoyed it. Amazing. Oh God, it was incredible. 
Looked really fantastic. This side of um, Nil, we actually <laughs> we watched lots of them. We didn't get to see the St Kilda Collingwood match, which is our back for the Saints. That was a bit of a bummer, but yeah. it looked fantastic. And um, bravo to Adelaide for putting on such a wonderful event. Mm. Oh yeah, good on him. Bravo. Yeah, our <laughs> our premier. You know, he loves sport, and all the good stuff he's done is kind of about sport. Oh, okay. And, uh, I don't want to get too political, but um, yeah, he's like sports my go to when all else when everything else is going down the toilet. Just put on a big event, and yeah, people we all, all love so me. We won't talk about the golf. Well, the golf happened as well, and of course, he brought back the Adelaide Five Hundred, and wow. you know who knows what else we'll have. He probably wants to bring Wimbledon here next. For all I know, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I got no idea. The gather round was really good. We've yeah, got. It was um, awesome. Sorry, tasting Australia. He's on and it finishes tomorrow. So that's a food festival and it goes only for about a week and a bit. Um, and I was, I really wanted to go and see this one event at Adelaide Uni with Adam Liao, who I love his show, oh, The Cook yes. Up, and I use his cookbook and I just love, love him. Um, but I couldn't get to do that, unfortunately. So by the time this one goes out, um, Tasting Australia will be finished because it finishes on the 7th. But okay, yeah. That's always a bit of fun. Yeah. And uh, hey, guess what? What's that, Guess Ben? What? Tennis started today, oh. my, little, my little lad, and uh, they won. The team won. Oh, five sets job. to one. They uh, Five matches to one, I should say. Yeah. Five yeah, set so tiebreaker. Oh, that's fantastic. Five, five matches. The team won five matches. The other well team done. won one. They had some new players, and it's all it's all fun. It's all just little kids just getting used to the game and seeing if they like it. But they the guys played really, really well. Yeah. That is so some good. All that shots. training. Are you still coaching them, Ben? Well, I'm their team manager, which, okay. but I've kind of just assumed the role of coach. So, you know, I'm like screaming at them and throwing <laughs> rackets at them. No, I'd, <laughs> no, I wouldn't and I shouldn't joke about that, should I? But they, uh, no, I, I just like to give them a little bit of a rev up at the start and what, because tennis is a, it's a very individual game, but it's also, it's mm. also a team sport as mm. well. So you want to try and get them to, think about the team and support each other and that's um, so yeah, good oh, really, good really on good. him yeah totally fantastic. love it that he's into tennis and hopefully they continue to keep playing really really well sounds like they're starting to hit their straps now so that's pretty cool yeah absolutely hey, um a lot of like you said there's heaps happening not only mm. in australia but around the world um yeah. we've got the coronation of king charles happening as we speak so it's that'll happening. be at that will moment. be, yeah, that's a pretty big deal. It's history in the making, so it's going to be really um, interesting to see that and repeating the oath if you're going to do that, if you're making the coronation meal, which is the quiche and asparagus. Oh, um, dear. <clears throat> currently, Ben is wearing a crown and I am holding I some am. sort of scepter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Have you had that checked out by a doctor? <laughs> Needs draining, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but, no, that <laughs> <laughs> that will be a really, um, you know, interesting thing to see tonight, to see King Charles be coronated. But um, <laughs> what? Is that- coronated. It just sounds funny. <laughs> it's like going to be like pickled or something. I don't know. That's um, but not only am I super excited to speak to our very special guest today. Yes. We do have some breaking news. Oh, do, 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 I was going to say, do, do, do. you're going to do the... <laughs> Okay. We news. have we have actually got in contact with Rachel Lynch, who is the author of the book club, Bold Lies. Bold she, Lies, the one book book club. We, the one book book club. We have actually got in contact with her. We are meeting with her later next week and we are recording. People, <laughs> this is amazing. Ben, Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Can you believe it? We we found her. She's in the Cotswolds. Is that how you pronounce it? Oh yeah, that's is that by the beach? Or oh, it's a, it sounds nice anyway. Yeah, it's in England. So yeah. um, she's an English author. She's going to be on the podcast. So stay tuned, listeners. We have mm. got some amazing breaking author news coming your way. So this is the book that I bought for you as part of your KK at Christmas, which was late. I think I got to you in about February. Mm, yeah, um, it was. And it was just by chance I came across this book. And 
We've sent it to a bunch of people, not knowing the author really, to be honest, and it turns out it's quite a good book. Our, it's a great our book. Readers are really, really enjoying it. So now we're going to be talking to the author. That's unbelievable. Fantastic. Yeah, so she's actually a really well-established author. Check yeah. her out. Um, so, yeah, she's read. She's written a whole suite of books and this one book, Bold Lies, basically is one of the books in the series. So um, mm. put your hand up if you're up for it next. And um, I think you've got it at the minute, don't you, Ben? I do. I yeah. picked it up yeah. and I've got it now. So I've actually I've actually reviewed it already. I need to send it on to someone else to read and review. Yeah, I wonder who that's going to be. Have I got oh, somebody in mind? Well, I don't know if Sarah did it. She did it. She's already read it. She's already read it. Okay, yeah. so I need to find someone else. That's okay. Yeah. Look, I will find someone. Don't you worry. I, right, I know cool. people. Mm. <laughs> you know people. <laughs> I know people. Okay, cool. Now, we've got to zero in on our halfway point, Neil, for just a moment, or the, yes. the uh, Wimmera area, and talk about the Steampunk Festival, which, oh. I mean, oh, my goodness, this thing is crazy. It goes off, and there's some – Pretty incredible photos from the weekend in Horsham, yeah. For yeah, the, absolutely. The yeah. yeah, and um, it was a great weekend. Everybody gets dressed up. They, you know, they have um, street stalls and food vans, and um, everybody just sort of lets their hair down. And it was a really great weekend by all accounts. And it's, I think, it's just getting bigger and bigger each year. So good on everyone for that went in and had a great time dressing up and um, some of the photos that we saw in the the Neil and um, the Neil Press was awesome. Yep. So, yeah, I think we've shared a couple on the socials. Yeah, you know what? I always love how they they, they dress up the horse in the main street. In, <laughs> in I just find it so amusing, this big hat and scarves and sunglasses on this horse in the main street. I always find that very amusing. But that's in that's in nil. So yeah, good on you. Good on you for getting into it. And and Wendy is always Wendy Bywaters is always yeah. sharing tons and tons of stuff. She gets right yeah, into it. Love it. So um perhaps one year we'll get up there to check it out, Ben. What do you reckon? Yeah, Your absolutely. Stuff? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of Mad Max Thunderdome. It's very Mad Max. Yeah, Edward Scissorhandsy kind of. Yeah, yeah it's up. all. Yeah, it's very, very much that sort of style. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but before Good we on get, you. before we get to um, bringing our VIP out of the green room, I just want to give you a little bit of an update on some of the, my train friends because I know remember last last time we <laughs> spoke about train friends, absolutely. and anyway, I have. I recently saw um, my train friend Elvis Lady, mm. and the other day, so that was good to you know give her a bit of a nod and a wink. But I kind of made a new train friend, and anyway, really? um, yeah, I don't know her name, but she had a dog, mm. and um, she took the dog on the train, and she oh. was, um, she'd taken her dog into the office, and she works in a legal. Just got chatting to this lady, anyway. She, she takes her dog once a week into the the. the the office and it just breaks the ice with everyone. There's like lots of lawyers and really um, sort of stiff kind of corporate people. Mm. But once the dog comes into the mix, just relaxes everyone. And basically, you know, she said it's a real icebreaker and, you know, the mood in the office changes. I thought that would be really good. Yeah. Having I a dog like in the that. office. Yeah. yeah. I have heard of it going well and not well, depending <laughs> on the dog, I suppose. But yeah. I think you could definitely get a dog at the uni. That would be incredible. Yeah, there are some places that um, bring dogs in from time to time. And this one particular day, this is no joke, Ben, I saw this um, this lady at work. She'd brought a little puppy in. And anyway, we were just like playing with it and cuddling it. It was a little toy poodle. It was a mixed sort of um, some sort of thing doodly poodly thing you know it was a, a mix between something it was oh it was gorgeous it was only a puppy and then on the way home on the train I saw a lady with a similar dog and it was like two dogs in one day it was amazing yeah. um but it was just great seeing the little puppy on campus and oh, oh cute. and then um do you know that the guide dogs of Australia they can bring into the office environment like a whole bunch of little puppies Oh, really? And then you get to play with the puppies just for like no. half an hour or something. Yeah. So um, oh, wow. it's like okay. the mental health, um, you know, just a, a really good icebreaker in the in the office and that would, wouldn't that be amazing? That would be so good. But you'd want to take one home. 
I know. They're just so adorable. They are. But, very, um, very yeah, cute. That was, that was really fun. So that was, um, that was my train ride home the other night. <laughs> Thanks. We need, we need to have the train updates. It's yeah. got to just be a thing now. We're stopping all stations now from here on in. Amazing. Uh, now, <laughs> on to <laughs> just... We just needed a moment there, yeah, people, just to uh, take it all in. Absolutely. The year is going by really fast. We're less than 100 days to one of our favourite events, the Tour de France. And yep. are you running the best Tour de France competition in the world? I will this be year? running it again. And okay. perhaps we can open know. it up to the public, to the listeners. Oh, please. I think that would be fantastic. Who wants, who wants to be involved? It's an amazing competition. I know. Great prizes to be won. Join us in no sleep for a month. <laughs> <laughs> And Christy goes all out with, you know, round the world trips. There's, you know, luxury yeah. luxury cruises. Yeah. There's oh, yeah. all sorts. Yeah. Once in a lifetime opportunity. More details to come. But yeah, Tour de France is coming up soon. But the Giro starts tonight, so I'll be watching that as well. <sighs> oh wow. Lots, lots, lots going on, Ben. We all right, sure ben. do. So oh, excuse moi. So what do you reckon, Ben? Should we uh even though we've got lots going on, should we introduce our next guest? Yes, coming up is our very special guest, Denise Hoydasek. Now, Christy, we are very lucky today to be joined by not only an amazing artist, but a great friend of mine. Denise Hoydasek is an Australian artist based here in wonderful Adelaide. She was born in Germany and grew up in Sydney and now lives in Adelaide. So she's been been to a few pretty interesting places. Uh, Denise is an abstract painter with modernist influences. She creates amazing paintings. As you can see, I've got some mm. works behind us and we're not done yet. We've got the collection underway and I'm sure we'll probably uh, acquire some more as we go through our wonderful life. Uh, she uses a combination of shape, colour and texture to convey a mood and draw the viewer in. Mm. Um, as I said, I've got we've got three of Denise's artworks hanging in our house and I just absolutely love them. And we're so happy to have you on the show today, Denise. Welcome. Thank you so much. Hello, you Denise. You made me look very, very good. You, oh, know. you are. It's lovely to see you, Denise. Thank you for taking the time to chat with us on the pod. We've been wanting to get you on for yonks. And, um, yeah, so we're really grateful that you're here with us today. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> now, Denise, you were born in Germany. And you grew up in Sydney. So can you tell us a little bit about your background and growing up and, and how you came to live in Adelaide? Yes, of course. Um, yes, so I was very small when um, we moved back to Australia. I was nearly one, one year old and um, we landed in Sydney and I grew up and did all my schooling in Sydney. So basically Bondi Beach was my backyard. Wow. So nice. I was very much in the... Um, well, you know, in in the environment of almost like a puberty blues, I would say. <laughs> I was surfing, not me, but we watched a lot of surfers. And um, look, I must say, it was I had a, a really great childhood, and um, my dad was always a very creative um, inspiration for me. He had um, he was he's German, and he actually um, worked for the Brecht Theatre when he was much younger in Berlin. Mm. So um, we, you know, art was always hovering there in the background and my mum, um, she also worked for a very, um, quite a prestigious gallery in oh, the 80s, um, going into the 90s. Um, which was called Holdsworth Gallery. It was in Wallara and she lived, uh, she worked there for um, a few years and I remember going in there when I was very, very small and sitting there and looking around me and thinking, wow, this is wonderful. And they there would be the likes of Brett Whiteley mm. and um, mm. Arthur McIntyre and, and, you know, some of those really well-known artists um, would go in there or were represented by them. So... Yes, no, I, I, I did have a very um, interesting, you know, childhood in Sydney. Yeah. Denise, like yeah, it, it sounds like um, you were really interested in growing when you were growing up in art. <laughs> Come on, Christy, get it together. Denise, 
Were you interested in art growing up at school or when did you realise art was something you were passionate about? I must say probably more in high school when I um, I had a really lovely, uh, well, actually a couple of really lovely art teachers in high school and I went to um, Dover Heights High School, which people in Sydney will know, which went through a very rough patch and we all, all of us who came out of Dover thought, God, we made it through there and if any of us did anything with ourselves, it was a miracle. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. Yeah, we all have a giggle about it now. <laughs> some people did go off to have to do some wonderful things out of that school. But um, I had some I had some two amazing artists, uh, artists, teachers, mm. um, and uh, one was Lena Tessarero, who I'm in contact with now, and they just really encouraged me and were just... You know, they were just wonderful and I my interest was photography actually but I would go also um, on top of that I would actually go attend um, the Wallara um, Art Centre which was on Bondo Road. So I'd walk down and go to life drawing and painting classes quite early on from so probably from 14 all the way through until I finished school and I remembered then being in that environment that that was where I wanted to be, you know, in those art rooms and the smell of paint and <laughs> being in that environment was, was the right place for me. Isn't that oh, wow. amazing when you reflect back on the teachers and the influence that they, they can have on your life and um, and now look where you are now and you're still in contact with one of your teachers. Yeah, look, absolutely. I, my, I have a the greatest admiration for um, teachers and I think um, I was very lucky, especially having art teachers that were so wonderful with me. Oh, that's great. Mm, They obviously saw the talent, Denise. Oh, I don't know. (laughs) Do you still do (laughs) photography as well, Denise? Look, photography is definitely um, still a part of my life. Um, So I I went on to study photography, but, yes, I still draw, um, you know, I still use my photographer's, I, when I take shots of my artwork in an environment or I still look at things when I'm, you know, when we go on holidays, I suppose that's when I really start to go back to photography quite a bit as well oh. and to use it as a, a, a journal form for me, for my work now as well. So I capture things that are inspiration and I will use them later. Oh, fantastic. So on the show, we love talking to artists. We've spoken to mm. authors and performers and other other artists as well, Elizabeth Close being one of them who's an amazing Indigenous artist here in South Australia. So from your perspective, what's it like being an independent artist? You're developing art, you're having to get inspired and, and create new works, but then you're also marketing and selling and, and running a business all at the same time, as well as, you know, having a child and running a family. (laughs) So what's it like fitting in, um, I guess, your passion, but it's also an enterprise at the same time? What's that like? The logistics of it all. Well, um, it has, I definitely has its ups and downs. I would say that, um, look, the business side for artists, most artists, I would say, um, doesn't always come easy. It's it's not an area that we... um, our expertise is really. Yeah. So I always, I did struggle with it, but I think having been become a mature artist, you know, so, you know, I did lots of things before I came back to being a, falling back into art and working um, as a full-time artist. Um, I think that has helped me as well, having just that experience mm. um, and confidence, I think too. So look, you know, I try and be as organised as possible. I'm very lucky to be a full-time artist now. So, you know, I just plan my days. You know, you're you're one of everything, really. You're like a business manager. You're, um, you know, you're, you try, you're also the person who tries, has to sell themselves. So you're marketing, you have to look after your monetary side of it. And then, of course, you have to be practising it. So, mm are a bit of a um you know you have to be sort of good at everything in a way but I think just being very organized um having your goals set out in front of you making sure that you're um you know you plan your day and it's time management as well Mm. but it's also knowing 
you know, just how to reach out to people, how to present yourself on Instagram. I mean, everything's so much about social media. So you have to be sort of in contact with that yeah. a lot. Yeah. yeah. Do you do you lean on other people for support? So for your marketing or how to do your um, digital media, social media? Uh, is that something you just sort of learn along the way and take inspiration from other people? Yeah, look, I, um, I probably have learnt most of that myself. I, you know, I'm lucky enough to have the skills as a photographer too so that I can mm. on those when I need to take shots of my work um, and send them on to galleries and so forth like that or to, yes, I would love to source that out. I mean, the packing of my artwork and, um, you know, the social media stuff and the tax stuff, I would just <laughs> love. Anyone out there who wants to practice, I don't know. Yeah, you I would love to source that out. But at the moment, I... I, I need to do that myself. Yeah. Wow. And you've got a you've got a really good partnership with Fenton and Fenton, who um, have a lot of your work on their website. How did that come about? So I um, Fenton and Fenton every year put out do a call out for emerging artists and or artists, and um, they will. Uh, they will put a call out, and you can send in an application, and I. I did. So I, I sent in an application. Now that was in, um, so we're 23 now, 20, I think that was 1921, no, 2021, sorry. 1921. Oh, 20, <laughs> a while ago now. Um, yeah, no, that was 2021 and I sent in um, an application of my work and, you know, bio and so forth and um, I was one of the runners-up. So I was one of the five, I think there was five of us that were chosen. There was a winner and that was Sky. Llewellyn at that time and I was one of the runners up and so they for that year they actually represent you and they do all the media and um you know yes they just push the promotion you yeah mm -hmm. side of it and I threw myself into it and it was very lucky my work was very well received they're a beautiful team to work with um and it's just continued to be very very good for me so I was yeah, I feel very lucky to have um been recognized by them so and yes I could continue to sell work through them that's so, amazing yeah, that's brilliant really cool. I don't know yeah. much about that but I'm keen to figure um look into that a little bit more yeah check it out yeah and their photography is great I right. love the way they they throw a lot of paintings and artworks together and it's just like Wow, on a pink wall, or with it's okay. really, really it's just yeah. like so colourful and well, yeah, they, it's they offer a styling service too. So they sell furniture, they sell um, a styling service, and they um, Lucy's very, very um, passionate about artwork and travel. So I suppose I just got back from India, and I think too that that was that connection because she has a, a very strong connection to India. Ah, right, okay. So um, yeah, oh. so. That, yes, that's kind you. of wants to be my next question, but I've I've got to go to what Ben says here, <laughs> Denise. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah, I want to talk about India anyway. Um, uh, we know you take inspiration from nature, and in South Australia, you've drawn a lot from the Flinders Ranges, um, one of my favourite places in Australia. Bloody love it. Um, but what sort of process do you go through when developing your art, Denise? So I'm interested to hear about that. Right, so. Oh, I love the Flinders too, and I must say that was the first time. I've never been a bush person, but that the first time I went to the Flinders, I, I really it really resonated with me, and I felt that the spirituality of the place, and I think the mm. colours, and oh, and we had Welcome to Country, and it just really, really moved me. So, um, yes, you're right; that was an influence on my work, but. Um, I, I really love travel. Look, in, I must say travel and design um, and, yeah, look, mid-century has always been a great inspiration to me. So, look, I generally um, love to capture lots of photos. I draw upon colour. When I was in India, the textures, the colours in Jaipur, it's the pink city, they just mm. sang to me. Everything was covered in like this dustiness, but it was still this beautiful colour underneath. Um, so I would capture um, images of that, write notes. When I get back home and when I'm in the studio, I will draw from that 
perhaps my my colors that I that I pulled from those colors and then that sing to me because it's all about feeling as an artist you know it's it's really you can feel it when the, the colors are right and then my thing is I love abstract shapes so I often will either draw the shapes out or I also loved collage and collage has followed me all the way from art school I went to uni and oh. I use collage um, as always a way of um, loosening up and ex- I, I've, I've always been fascinated with that mm. process so um, I will often do a mock-up of that artwork that's coming to my mind and then from that I will paint so you know there's a few steps that go along um, but color texture and shape is certainly so, yeah the- it's so interesting that you're talking about that, Denise, and um, our viewers, our listeners can't see what we're looking at, but um, we're actually recording in Denise's studio. She's sitting in her studio and her background is um, many pieces of artwork we're looking at and that you can see the collage. Uh, and Ben also has many, he's got some, we'll take a screen grab in a sec, but um, <laughs> the, now that you're saying that, it makes sense with your art. But the collages and the shapes and um, – That's right, yeah. and you'll often post pictures of the collage, which just of your thought process, which is actually really, really cool. And do you like it loud or quiet? Um, you know, is your studio a place where you go, I've got it in a place where I feel inspired or do you like loud music? You know, some artists like chaos oh. or are you much oh, more yeah. about the calm? That's a great um, question, Ben. That is. That is a really great question. Um, look, I – I'm a big, I love listening to podcasts and I will change. I will swap over if I really need to con, um, concentrate because often if I'm listening to a podcast, I'll go, oh, I need to write that down or I need to, but, um, <laughs> yeah, so I look often there'll be some music that I'm I'm playing. There will often always be something playing. I'm not very good with silence. Yeah, I've right. Um, I've always got to have some sort of music or I'm listening to something interesting that's inspiring me at the time. Oh, right, cool. Have you, have you heard of these things on um, YouTube and it's like you can um, be in the middle of a, a library with the fire crackling in the rain outside? No. And, uh, yeah, so just if you want not background noise but not noise or talking and you, there's all these different types of um, um, audios that you can listen to and it could be you're um, in a cafe in Greece and you can just hear all the clatter and the background chatting oh, wow. or, yeah, I'll, I'll have to um, post them up because they're really cool. Yes, definitely. They're really cool and there's this one that I like and it's you're inside a library and it's raining outside and then it's the fire crackling and then you can hear people kind of like turning pages of books or people kind of walking around. It's got a name and I can't think of it off the top of my head, but it's it's really good to have background noise. It's not noise. It's not music. That's kind of it's makes you feel sound. like <laughs> yeah. not a whale sound. No, that sounds really cool actually because it, it's funny. Yeah, say, oh, yeah. Another, I love books. I'm a very very big book collector. So, um, if for inspiration, if I, I'm not drawing from those things, I'll often be looking through my art books and oh yeah, libraries are great places. Yeah, they're amazing, yeah. So um, speaking of in- inspiration, what new styles and ideas are you exploring? I've noticed lately you're going to sort of this two-tone, just using two colours and some more um, simpler colour styles. What What are you working on at the moment? What's exciting you with what you're exploring? Well, at the moment I'm working um, for a collection of, I'm working towards a collection of artworks for an exhibition later on. Um but in the meantime, I'm doing a lot of playing. I'm trying to loosen up a little bit. Um, which <laughs> what do you mean helpful. by that? Well, what do you mean by loosen up a bit? Like, well, in my do work, diff- like do different stuff, or yeah, I mean, I, I work, my work is very structural in the sense of the shapes are very structural. They're not loose shapes. Mm. Um, and I would like to eventually explore, you know, some sort of. Um, boundaries with all of that and loosen up a little would, bit more Not would you so do that simple. under your own name or would you do that sort of like no, under, no like, you know how like some authors do like phantom names or whatever yeah like if you went totally different. completely different to what you do now would 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 you do it under 
you know, if you wanted to start painting flowers or something, you know, yeah, as opposed well, to what, what you're saying, doing. There's always the, the question of style which everyone gets fixed on. But, you know, I was listening to something interesting the other day and I think, um, look, artists have to keep evolving and it's mm. what, you know, you need to just, if you were to do the same thing for the rest of your life, it would you you couldn't do it. I couldn't do it personally. It would, you know, I need to keep learning. I need to keep learning more about my own the mediums I'm using. You know, in every way. So I think it's just a natural progression that that artists change and that you don't sit in this, with the same genre for the rest of your life. So at the moment, I'm exploring textures a little bit more because I do work quite flat. In saying that, oh, yeah. I, you know, my work is um, very layered. It's sanded down. There's um, washes over it, and you know, it's got that element of those, that dustiness that I, that was so, I don't know, ca- I captured in India that was so mm-hmm. meaningful to me. So, um, but I would like to work more texturally, and so while I'm working on an ex- exhibition, I'll work on the side where I'll just play you know, just to let it out. And if something there I like, often I don't like a lot of stuff, um, <laughs> you know, I will draw on that and maybe explore it a little further. Oh, wow, cool. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on uh, what your, what's your opinion on the AI art? Ah, yes, that's really interesting because that's starting to come out now. Look, I haven't explored it enough, um, but I do feel, uh, I don't know, I think... I think people are interested in people's work when they know the artist. Mm. And I think there's, you know, for me, I, and the more I get to know my collectors, and, of course, I don't get to know all of them because they sold through Fenton and Fenton, but the times I do get to know my collectors and if I've, I've sold directly to them, I think that's where that's what makes the work interesting mm. you know, getting to know the artist where it comes from what the history is why they arrived at that mm. so for me ai oh look i don't know I, I i to me i still don't see it as coming from the artist there's not that same connection while it might be visually kind of yeah. impressive yeah. there's not that same connection no. No, that's that's absolutely no. true yeah yeah Interesting. Denise, we always ask our local guests this question, depending on which side of Neil they are, of course. What do you love about Adelaide? Tell us. Look, I love it's I have a, a bit of a mixed relationship with Adelaide. But over the years <laughs> it sounds complicated. Oh, I get I get homesick. I do get homesick, but I lo- I do love the big city. Um I really love being in a big city where you disappear. But over the years, I have really become very, very fond of Adelaide and I've met some such and made such wonderful friends here that are very, very inspirational and um, I think I've been so lucky to have settled in a lovely neighbourhood. You know, the, the beach is eight minutes down the road. I've got a coffee shop on the corner now and many, many more and a space in which I can work from home. And I don't think if I just don't think that can happen in every city anymore, especially Mm. Sydney. Um, And, you know, the airport's just down the road. road. But I think Adelaide, for me, I think Adelaide's what the strengths are, are of Adelaide is definitely the festival season and the finish season I think you really feel that it's on here oh, and maybe yeah. because of our landscape and the way it, you know we've got a smaller situation here, but I really love it I think it comes alive I went to WOMAD this year and I just thought oh my god this is just fantastic and um you know we've got so many beautiful little restaurants and bars popping up now in mclaren vales just down the road so i think it's got so much potential this little mm. this little city Great I think. beautiful yes. love it yeah i couldn't agree more so look we're just about wrapping up this wonderful interview and we wanted to ask what's next for you you said you're preparing a collection for an exhibition can you tell us what's going on there and what else is coming up for you 
Yes, so I am preparing for an exhibition in Melbourne with the Fenton Fenton Gallery and I'll be very lucky enough to be um, uh, sharing the space um, with three other artists two ceramicists, I believe, and another 2D artist who's um, – so they've actually brought us together because we've all worked in – in, we've got a similar eye in the sense that we all love the geometric shape, texture, and um, that will be opening on the 18th of November. Um, wow. So if anyone's in Melbourne, please come. Christy. I will yeah. be there. And you there. To, awesome. Yeah, you'll there. have to share the details so we can help – um, um, we can share the details on the podcast and on our yeah, no, socials. Yeah, absolutely. And um, there'll be a few people from Adelaide flying over, which is nice. <laughs> and so I have to come up with at least 10 pieces for that. So I'm very busy in the moment, <laughs> at the moment in the studio. And I might have some pieces in the um, affordable art fair in Melbourne oh, again this year. Oh, okay. Well, Fantastic. Does it, will it take you all like, will you be like someone who's um, studying for an exam, just like rush at the last minute? No, Try and me. crank them no. out. No, I start early. I probably start too early sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I like to, I don't like to leave things to the last moment. Some of the um, paintings in the background, are they going to be for the exhibition? Yes, yes they will be. So are, they, are they in progress or are they done? Some of them, some of them oh no, both are nearly done. A few things need to be, you know, tweaked on them, but. Um, they're the smaller pieces. I'm actually going bigger, but mm. I oh, wow. How big's up. big? What would you say? Yeah. Well, at least for me, big is at the moment even like, you know, 90 by 90. So wow. because you actually can work, you know, I've been working sort of smaller than that anyway, but I'm trying to push myself out of my comfort zone and <laughs> and grow on the canvas. Fantastic. Oh, wow. Oh, good luck. We will, we will definitely be keeping an eye out for that and Christy, I'm, I'm sure there. We'll, we'll go and check it out. Absolutely. I am absolutely there. Well Fenton and Fenton, <laughs> I'll be your. You there. Oh, fantastic. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you as always, Denise. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank no, you, Denise. It's been a lovely afternoon chat. Thank you so much. Well, Ben, that was really excellent. I absolutely loved this, um, chatting with Denise. Um, yeah. What a gorgeous lady. Yeah, she is. She's a really good friend. Um, and she did mention after we stopped recording um, how supportive and wonderful her husband has been, Rick. And Rick is a, one of my best, best friends. He's such a great guy. I love him to bits. Um, so big shout out to, to Rick for um, being a pretty, pretty awesome guy and sounds like a pretty awesome husband. Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? I'm not surprised, though, I've got to yeah. say. <laughs> well, that just about wraps it up. Our next episode is shaping up to be an absolute cracker. We have um, got a great chat lined up with Georgia from the Hindmar Shire Youth Council. Yes. We're super excited to speak to mm. some of the legends on the council, the young guys. Um, and you know they've got a podcast in the works on um, youth mental health. As in, it's out, or they're working on something. They're 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 building it as we speak. Oh, fantastic! So, yeah, oh, that's so, so good. Super interesting. Happy, and really important. Yeah, super important, and looking forward to um, chatting to them. I'm pretty sure that's we've got that lined up for the next step. So, oh. until then, until we speak to you next, have an awesome weekend. Yes, and we'll see you next time. See you later. Oh, Ben, I forgot one last thing. I have a special shout-out to Auntie Sayo. You know who you are. Hope you enjoyed the latest episode. See ya. <laughs> See ya, Auntie Sayo. Yeah.